Hello, welcome to another tutorial on how to use Coda. This one, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to build an, a live audience polling slash voting app. And if you want to skip right to the template, you can go to the Coda template gallery and search for a template called Dory. And you're going to see this all hands meeting Q&A tracker pop up. And we're going to with all my tutorials, we're not going to use a template. We're going to start from scratch. And uh, hopefully through this tutorial, you'll see that you can start from a blank canvas and you can find freedom in the canvas. Again, referencing the late and great Bob Ross. And why would you want to build a live audience polling doc? Uh, sometimes you're doing Q&A for an all hands meeting, for a team meeting, and you just want to have a quick and easy way to see what questions are being asked instead of awkwardly raising your hand in a meeting and trying to um, wonder if your question is relevant to the rest of the audience. So let's start off with building our doc by saying this is um, my team's questions. And we're going to start off by just giving this a basic name. Let's call this Q and A for my team. So believe it or not, this entire doc is one table. And it's super powerful how this table works. And we're going to start off by creating a table, going to table, new table. And let's call this table add a question. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see everything. And I'm going to collapse this sidebar. So the basic things we're going to need is question. Uh, who raised it? Uh, we're going to say this vote up, vote down, clear vote, votes up, votes down. And let's see what else we need here. We also need the up votes, down votes, the actual answer to the question. And let's see, we also want to have an added column. So, so far, this looks like a really basic table. Nothing crazy so far. Um, you're probably wondering, can I just do this in Google Sheets? I can have like a bunch of questions here and people can put their name next to them in Google Sheets and it might work fine and dandy, but you know, this is that Google Sheet will, will definitely get a, a little bit um, out of hand and unorganized. And with this Coda doc, you can make it feel more like an app rather than a spreadsheet in terms of handling questions from your team. So again, the goal is here is to create a doc that feels, uh, that allows you as the meeting owner to quickly field what questions are being asked by the audience. And feel free to read the blog post more about the typical workflow. Uh, but in this video, where I'm just going to talk about how to build this doc. So before we, uh, actually one more column you want to insert is having a um, answered column. Instead of putting the answer, putting something like a word, I'm going to put a, um, a checkbox to indicate whether or not the question has been answered by the speaker or by the team. So let's call this a checkbox column. All right. So in terms of who raised it, this is actually going to be a people column type. And what we're going to do here is write equals this row as a formula dot created by. And this means that whoever adds a question to this table, this column will automatically be pre-filled with the person that asks, asks the question. So if I add a new row here, notice how it automatically pre-fills with my name, um, Al Chen. So I'm just going to kind of do some formatting with these columns so you can see more of the columns here. Okay, uh, we're also going to add a button column uh, here and we're going to call this, make this column rather a button format. And this is actually the button that your team members and audience can actually interact with to actually vote on upvote or downvote the questions that they want to see. So here we're going to call this, uh, let's call this, make this a thumbs up. Let's see here, thumb, this will be a thumbs up label. And we're going to give this a nice green background when it's all set and done. And what we're going to do here is say we want when someone hits this button, we want it to modify, modify this table, which is add a question. And we want it to apply it to just this specific row. 
And what we want to do is change the upvotes column that we added over here to be this formula equals uh, splice this row dot upvotes zero zero user. Now I'm going to walk you quickly through what this does. Splice is kind of a, a really neat formula that lets you take a list of values and you can delete things from that list and insert new values by using this last argument here. You can read more about how Splice works, but by putting in this formula, we're basically allowing users to add themselves to the upvotes column. So I'm gonna hit enter here and a few other things I want to do here is I want to disable this button if the um, if the the user has already voted on the question. So I'm going to write equals this row dot down votes. Oh, sorry, yeah, this row dot down votes dot contains user, or this row dot upvotes dot contains. Whoops, it contains user. So all this does is it looks at both the upvotes and downvotes columns. And if it already contains me, the user, then it doesn't allow me to vote again. You, the last thing you want is someone to be able to vote multiple times, or you may want that. I don't know. It's up to you. All depends on how you want to design your doc. But for all intents and purposes, we only want to give people the ability to vote uh, once on a question. So hit enter there. And <clears throat> now you'll notice that if I hit the, I'm just going to, make this a little narrower. If I hit the button here, it adds myself to the upvotes button, upvotes column, and it also removes, uh, makes this button um, disabled. I'm also gonna change this column to be a people type and remove that and allow multiple, and that's another important point is in the upvotes column, make sure you say allow multiple selection so that multiple people can be added to that column when people vote. So if I remove, um, myself from here, you notice how this button becomes active again, I can hit upvote. And if I add other people from my team, let's add like uh, Adam or Alex, they can all be added to the upvotes uh, column. So let's do the same thing for button for downvote. I'm going to quickly uh, hopefully do this a little faster so you have to see me rewrite the whole entire formula. So I'm going to copy and paste some of the values here so I don't have to go through all the menus and let's see here I'm going to do a modify row this table just to this row update the downvotes column this here like this equals whoops equals this and I want to also disable it if same same idea here disable uh, disable this if if the downvotes or upvotes contains that user. Let's give this a nice red background in this case. And I give this a green background, I did. Um, the last thing is you notice that the, uh, the button here has like this little weird true symbol. These are called badges and I'm going to add a badge to both of my buttons to indicate how many people actually voted for that question. It's just like a nice little visual indicator showing you how many people voted for that question. So if I do this row.upvotes.count here, it counts the number of people in my upvotes column, and it shows how there's like three people here. And this one, I'm just going to change this to, um, whoops, oh, this is actually, I put this in the wrong, this actually was disabled, and this will be this row.downvotes.count. Oh, for some reason it didn't like that uh, because when I copied and pasted this, it didn't really like that formula. There we go. All right. And we're also going to add a clear vote button. Um, this button is a little more complicated to program, but basically what we want to do here is if the user m voted for a question but wants to clear their vote, they want to re, they maybe voted up, they actually want to vote down. We can also make that work here with this button so they can recast their vote. So I'm going to call this clear and I'm going to say modify rows here. Also changing this table, just this row. And I'm going to say um, votes up. So I'm going to say this is a little more complicated formula equals if this row dot upvotes 
dot contains users. I'm looking to see if this, if the upvote column contains this user. Then uh, I want to say, let's see here. Yep, uh, this row goes to this user. Yep, I'm going to say this row dot upvotes dot filter. So I'm going to filter where the current value does not equal user. So this will actually remove myself from the uh, upvotes column if I'm in that column already after I push the the button, and then just do this row dot upvotes. For, for that. And actually, I want to change this to um, upvotes here. I also want to do the same thing for downvotes. So if I happen to appear in the downvotes column, I also want to remove myself uh, from the downvotes column. So I'm just going to copy and paste this formula here so we can kind of I can save you from having to me to rewrite the whole formula. But it's very similar to the last formula. I'm just looking at if this row at downvotes contains myself remove myself if I'm the current user, and then it would just basically do that if, I, um, if I'm in the column. Uh, lastly, we also want to disable this button if, the, um, if one of these columns does not contain myself. So I'm going to go here, go to disable. I'm just going to write this formula really quick. Not, so basically, um, if, if one of these columns does not contain myself, then basically disable the button. But since one of these rows does contain myself, it's going to show up. So if, watch what happens if I click clear in this case. It's going to take myself away from the upvotes column. And it also disables the button. But you notice that these buttons become available again because we have put a condition here where we disable it if one of these columns contains myself. So this basically allows us to get the functionality we need to vote on questions um, for uh, for our, our our voting doc voting app. All right, some last minute things we're going to do here is I'm going to do votes up equals a count of the upvotes. So this can be uh, as a number, and let's going to make this over here. Votes down will also be a number. And this is just going to be the count of the number of down votes. So down votes dot count. This is zero. And uh, what else do we want here? Uh, down votes, this is going to contain it. So if I ask a question, you know, um, what is our hiring for 2019? Let's add another question. Let's say uh, who, where, um, is our next offsite? Let's say, dude, <laughs> where's my car? All right. You notice how this automatically put me as the question raiser. And I'm going to also downvote this question. Notice how it adds me there, downvote that question. And what's really cool is that as people are voting on their um, what's what's important to them, um, we can sort this column by descending since this column will always have the count on the number of people that have voted for upvoted this question. It will always contain the most number of uh, this row. Will, this question will always come to the very top. So let's say, um, and also we can also have another column here that just says this row dot created. And this will tell you when that given uh, question was added to the added to this table. This is really helpful. We're not going to use this right now, actually, in our doc right now. But this is really helpful if you have multiple meetings, team meetings, and you want to keep track of what questions were being asked in which meeting. So let's say, for sake of example, um, let's say another person voted for this question. Let's say on God, and let's say this question happened to. I'm going to clear my vote here. And let's say this question was voted by uh, some more people. Let's say it was voted by Alden and by uh, Erica. You notice how it automatically goes up to the top, um, the second row, because it's being sorted by the votes up column. And another way you can kind of like make this look a little nicer is by removing, by hiding this column, the votes up column. Since we already know the badge is the number of people that have voted, we can hide this. 
we can hide this. So it looks a little neater uh, in our table. And what can happen is as people are adding in their questions here, um, where is the coffee machine? Other team members, since this is a shared code doc, anyone can go in and upvote and downvote um, the questions they like and don't like. And um, as you are answering the question, you can put the answer here. So where is our next offsite? It's going to be in, I don't know, let's say Orlando. And when you finish answering the question, you can hit this checkbox right here. And what you can do is filter the table so that it um, only contains the rows where the checkbox equals false. You notice how this automatically will get uh, filtered out of your table. And here's, what's, here's how the sorting will work. Remember how we had this column that counts the number of votes up, which is votes up right here. So far, these two questions are tied. Who is our, what is our hiring for 2019? Dude, where's my car? But let's see what happens when I vote for dude, where's my car? And, I'm, and let's see if it automatically sorts that to the very top of the list. So if I upvote this question, notice how it just went to the very top. And now it's a really easy way to crowdsource the top questions that are being um, requested by your community or your team or your conference. And I can maybe downvote some questions that I don't like. And you can also make this so that it might be, maybe the question that rises to the very top is a function of the upvotes plus the downvotes. In this case, we're only looking at the most upvoted questions. And again, once the question is answered, I can hit the checkbox and it filters it away from my table. Um, let's unfilter this really quick. Uh, let's just get rid of this filter for now. And the last thing I want to show is um, what this will look like on mobile, because one of the biggest advantages of a lot of the other live audience polling apps out there is that you can text a phone number or you can open up an app and anyone in the audience can kind of vote quickly without having to open their laptop. And if you open this doc, this table, and you look at it, what, what it looks like on mobile, if I just kind of uh, turn this into a mobile view, I'm just going to refresh this, whoops, refresh this really quick. It's going to render um, a little differently than uh, what you might see on desktop. And let's see if I can zoom in a little, a little bit here. So this is a uh, an iPhone, <laughs> um, uh, fake iPhone, I guess, on the browser. And you notice how I have my team's questions and I don't think there's anything here. Yep, this is just my team's questions. So. Uh, you notice how like these tables, the table now looks a little different. It looks more like kind of like a list on an, on, on an iPhone app. And uh, here, this picture represents the person who raised the question. Remember how we had that um, created by uh, formula? So now if I swipe right, I see all the buttons that I created in that in my table. So if I want to clear my vote from dude, where's my car, I can click on more click on clear, and now it removes my, my vote. Remember how it automatically sorts based on the, um, based on the number of people that vo voted? So if I wanna vote for Dude Where's My Car again, I can swipe right, hit the, pl hit the thumbs up sign, and it'll automatically sort to the very top of the list. So now if you're like in the audience and you wanna quickly upvote or downvote a question, this is a really nice way to do that on your phone without having to open up your laptop. Because when you open up your laptop, you're going to see this view, which is um, the full kind of table view. And you, sometimes on your phone, you don't want to see all these different columns. Uh, but this is basically how you can build that um, basic voting app to help crowdsource what kind of questions your team is wants to know from your speaker or from your team or what have you. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this, this tutorial. Uh, again, we started with a very blank canvas and we found freedom real freedom to build the applications that we want uh, using Coda. And in this case, we built a really simple voting doc to help gather and crowdsource the questions that are that matter for, for your team. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions.